People always ask us, you know, are there, are there movies that you have wanted to do for a long time that you never got the chance to do? This would be one of them. Uh, for many, 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 many years, we've considered but also been, frankly, kind of terrified to do The Shining. Oh, yeah. It's not an easy movie to translate into what we do. Um, again, when you, especially when you think about the, the, you know, everything we do is going to be a new show every 10 seconds. Um, so if you click the next slide, uh, I remember there was a lot of fans who said, where's the key art when we announced the maze? Here's the key art. You can finally see it. Um, and I th it's either going to be video next or a fan question, so go ahead and click. Oh, it's a fan question, go ahead. Uh, this is from Fernie Mouse, at Fernie Mouse. What is the main concept for The Shining? Or in other words, what do you want fans to feel? So I'm going to ask Chris that question. What do you hope our fans will feel when they go through our maze? Well, it's like what you were talking about, The Shining, at the beginning. In my mind, it's like... It's, it, it, it's very hard to do this within a five minute walk to attraction, but a sense of dread, you know, is trying to get some suspense. Because that's what that movie, when you watch it, is about. But it's a big, slow burn. And it really is. But that's, in my mind, what we're yeah. trying to pull through this maze and help you feel that. And I think that's. That's really a difference in horror movies that were made in the 70s. And the Shining, of course, was 1980, so it's right in line with those films. Um, as Chris referenced, it's a slow burn. You know, I know plenty of people who couldn't even probably watch The Exorcist; they wouldn't get past the Iraq sequence. You know, actually, I've met many of these people. You know, where I'd like to, they ask me, "What's your, you know, scariest movie of all time?" I'm like, "Oh, The Exorcist. You got to watch it." And then, you know, they can't get past the first 20 minutes. Uh, Halloween's the same way, by the way. Halloween, nothing really happens to the last 15 minutes of the movie. So it's a challenging thing to instill that sense of dread of what's coming when you're creating a live experience. Um, but there's also a piece of video we brought that was the announcement video for Shining that I think does a good job of explaining what we're hoping you will feel when you go through this maze. So if we could run the video. Neither of us talk, it's really awkward. We're sitting in my office just going. It's true. We're the least fun people to watch horror movies with. We're, you know, we're awful. We just sit there and we write our little notes. Um, but then we kind of very jaded. Up on the big board in my office, um, we wrote a list. Do you remember this? Yeah. And we wrote a list of the must-haves. And I'm, I'm actually gonna ask you guys, because I want to see how see how good you were at designing this maze. Um, if you were going to make a shining maze, give me one thing that should be in it. The teddy bear. Okay, I heard red rum, I heard a hedge maze. I heard twins. I heard twins, the gray twins. Elevator of blood. The teddy bear. Yes. Okay. And now it's all droning into one and I can't tell a damn thing if people are saying it. But, yeah, I mean, everything we just mentioned, yes, it's all in the maze. Um, but, from a scenic perspective, um, there's something I didn't hear you mention. Go ahead and click the next one. Um, these are all a lot of things you said, the Grady Twins, the Red Room Door, the Elevator of Blood, you know, here's Johnny, uh, the Hedge Maze. Um, but there's something else. Go ahead and click the next one. Thank you. 
what the hell just happened? <laughs> How did Henry, Henrietta just came back on the screen. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, you can click the next one. Okay, good. <laughs> there we go, okay, good, thank you. Um, the carpet. The carpet's actually really incredibly important, particularly scenically, because as Chris and I were sitting there writing all of our notes, and this is something we don't normally do in movies, we don't normally think about carpet, but you look at the scenic, and what do you have? You have stark white hallways, brown 1970s looking doors. Without the carpet, it's not the overlook. Yeah. Look at the camera angle too that he had. It was really low. He's really keen on the carpet. Um, and we felt that that was super important and almost a character within itself, actually. So, you know, normally we don't think about what's below your feet, because typically when people are going through a maze, their, their POV is like here. You know, it's not usually up, it's not usually down, it's always, where's the next scare coming from? Where's the next scare coming from? Um, so, we knew that it was really important that we had to reproduce this carpet. Um, that is a behind-the-scenes image of us making a little damp air. Um, for the Grady Twin scene. But yeah. if you click the next slide, um, this is what we're talking about. See the stark white hallway with that really geometrically shaped carpet, the, the really funky green and purple carpet that's room yeah. 237. Um, if you click the next slide. So this is the carpet we need. Yeah, we're seeing that out on the side. Yeah. This is actually right when the name started construction. So they're just, the first thing they did is they put down the carpet. The carpet gets an applause, that's all. Yeah. Well, there's more, there's more carpet pictures. I'm really into the yes. carpet. Go ahead, next picture. Yes. Um, the one with purple, that's number 237. The other one is... It's a hallway leading to the gold room, actually. So, there's a hallway leading to it. You go ahead and click the next one. Yes. Our, our designers get really into yes. what they're doing. I'll let Chris introduce his team there. On the left, that's Matt Maldonado. He does, uh, he's one of my art directors. Um, and he does most of my graphics, actually. He's kind of in charge of that. So um, you can tell our carpet is custom and custom printed. So Matt built that all by scratch. And we actually, um, it's very expensive to do, but we had that printed back east, actually. Um, shipped out and then uh, seamed within. I'm going to do my house in the you, you know what, you, I know, it's really awesome, and you know, you probably see Matt, he's probably wearing that shirt today out here somewhere. But nonetheless, on the other image, that's me and Matt, and then also Barbara Grill and Brandy Creason, who are two other designers and art directors that I have on my staff. So I have a small staff of people, but um, they're very knowledgeable and, and incredibly experienced. So. And there's one other guy who's not in this picture, his name is Troy. Yeah, Troy Zimmerman. Hey, you know, if you ever see a guy cruising around, and he's probably out here wearing a fez, a long beard. That's Troy. Troy hey. looks like, if you, uh, you know, we're doing Roanoke, American Horror Story. You know all the colonial guys that, like, march through the woods in American Horror Story in Roanoke with the torches? Uh, Troy, Troy looks just like them. Because he is, he is one of them, he's in American Horror Story, so yeah, he's yeah. one of those guys. Uh, he's in a lot of different movies. Uh, Troy actually came to us as a scarecter, um, worked for us as a scarecter, and then he got a chance to meet us, and we found out that he was a production designer, and yes. he had all these mad skills. Yes. So now he's part of our creative department. Actually, Troy went to architecture school out at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, so he has an amazing education behind him. And the, the crazy thing Troy did when we were doing The Shining, I should have taken a picture of this, but I didn't. But you know that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy? He got a big, big, like, you know, like you would draft the paper like you would for the maze. It's two foot by three foot. And just a tiny little script. By hand, he wrote that phrase thousands of times. Yes. By hand. You know, I walked into the office and I was like, oh my god. Yeah. I don't know what to do with it, but it's vision. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the cool thing and the message, the reason I mentioned Troy is for people who aspire to do this, it is possible to, you know, you literally came in the door as a performer and, you know, a few years later, he's designing the mazes with us. So it's pretty incredible. And that's the kind of talented people we get the opportunity to work with. Okay, next slide. 
We also have, you know, room 237. Um, very specific architectural look to it. If you click the next slide, uh, that was me rummaging around in the maze the other day. We're kind of in the middle of finishing up scenic. Um, we just started props, so I, they haven't even dressed the bed yet, but I just put my head in room 237 and took that picture. Um, that's the bedroom part of room 237. If we click the next slide, uh, this is the bathroom. Uh, hasn't started props yet, but. Yeah, it's just a small little sliver of what's to come, guys. You can tell we're, we're really working incredibly hard to make this look exactly like the film. And of course, you know, you will see the old one. Yes, of course. Um, next slide. Another uh, challenging thing is just to create the architecture of the overlook. This is a stuff in the movie where Jack's cruising through the lobby. Um, I took a couple of, uh, one picture of some of the columns that Chris has got going in the maze. Look, next slide. Yeah, you can tell. And you know what? Trying to. It, we're not going to click back, but looking at that other image, you know, it's so big and broad and expansive, you know, it's really hard for us to pull that off within a maze, but you can see we're making big, bold columns, as well as, you know, the black and white photos from the 1920s, even some of them are the all-odd 1920s, New Year Eve time as well. But, you know, we're really trying to hit the coloration, that terracotta color, even, even at the very top with the Native American graphic band that we have throughout and wrapping around. So, um, we're, we're pulling it off. You guys are going to be happy with it. Okay, next time. And then, of course, you know, here's John. When you think about it, that's a really difficult scene to do live in front of people. It's a guy chopping down a door that then has to, you know, stick his face in the door for the classic, here's Johnny Lyon, has to reach through the door to try to get to the lock. Uh, Wendy has to slash him with the knife. Um, so we, we knew we wanted to get all that action into the scene and compress it down so that you could do it. And of course, with pre-recorded audio, that means our performers are gonna have to be really good at miming to the audio um, so that it's all done to track. But we, we started doing this a couple of years ago when we did the Halloween days where we had Dr. Lucas shoot Michael Myers. And those performers were amazing. Like every single time I went in that room, you know, they were perfectly on cue. Michael, bang, 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 and they would react to it perfectly. So now we have to train our performers to do the same thing with the shining. But it still didn't solve the problem of how, how do you deal with this axe smashing through the door? Chris had a really good idea. I think I have the drawing for it on the next slide. There we go. Okay, okay. Explain your that's a concept drawing in the, it was illustrated by Lucas Kolschow, but the concept is, you can see on the right side, it's just a simple pivot, and it uh, acts on a simple pivot that has a gusset that's coming off the back of the door itself. Um, and the performer, um, like what John had said, to the sound of the chopping, will just move this puppet in forward, we have certain stops on it that you can only go so far forward, um, and it's a soft foam axe head. Um, so, like what John said, there's really four things that's got to happen. He's got to chop, he's got to put his head up through the door, then he's got to reach down through, and then when he's going to hit his hand. So, it's in a bathroom, there's probably 10 to 12 steps before you're out of the room, so that has got to happen all the way and everything, yeah. And Chris mentioned this earlier, but we did the math on this years ago. If you're a mm -hmm. performer in the scene, if you're playing Jack Torrance, you're going to do this 60,000 times. That's about the average of how many times a performer in the will do whatever we block for them to do. So it's all about repetitive action that they can do over and over and over again. 